Welcome back friends to a new Magic Arena video and what we're going to be doing today is looking at the best 13 mono black cards for post rotation standard moving into Guilds of Ravnica and if your card or cards didn't make this list then let me know in the comment section let me know what card or cards and why they should have made this list of course all 13 I should say all 16 but we'll get to that in a little bit but all the cards will be posted in the description below so that you can copy them if you'd like to and before we go any further in the video I'd like to thank you for spending some of your quality time to come hang out with me today and let's go ahead and dive right into it shall we so stitcher supplier super stupid good card if you're doing a lot of graveyard interaction right now there's a big buzz around this card because it simply is amazing it's a it's a body for one and it mills over three cards there's a lot of undergrowth action going around in the golgari section a lot of powerful cards that need a lot of cards in the graveyard this will definitely see a lot of standard play that's all i'm gonna say about that knight of malice Woo -wee. This card is just stupid good. That's all I'm going to say about that. I mean, uh, a black, a colorless, 2-2, two -two, first striker, hexproof from white. Really good. The fact that it gets plus one attack if there's a white permanent on the field. It doesn't say your opponent. You could have one too. Is, uh, is extremely relevant, okay? Right now, Boros aggro is the deck a lot of people are buzzing around to play when the post rotation does happen. Because aggro is a really, really like... Um, like good it's just really it's always been historically really good so knight of malice is going to see probably a lot of play because it just starts killing creatures before they can even hit it like it's really good that's all i'm gonna say about that and it dodges a great deal of removal like literally about half the removal that people will play against it i mean of course it doesn't uh, dodge dead weight or like a magma spray type effect but it does dodge a lot of cards and like i said it's a really solid creature it really is graveyard marshall because there is going to be a lot of Graveyard Synergy, Graveyard Marshal is going to see play, I'm pretty sure, in a lot of decks because it's pay three. You don't even got to tap it. That's the key card. That's the key ingredient to this card. Make a 2-2 zombie token. Powerful. Just powerful, powerful, powerful. That's all I'm going to say about that. Argyle's Bloodfast. Now, like I said about Search of Escanta with my Mono Blue list, there's a, there's going to be a lot of incidental artifact and enchantment hate in the actual like rotation when it happens. But Argyle's Bloodfast is just stupid good. Like you'd be an idiot basically not to play with at least one or two copies in the main or sideboard if you've got black in your colors, unless you're just full blown black aggro as low to the ground as possible. Like I just I, this card will for sure see play. It's just a really powerful magic card, uh, and I'm pretty sure it'll start seeing play in other formats when people start to realize how strong it truly is. Cast down. This is just a really premium removal spell. There's going to be a lot of legendaries rotating out of standard, like Carry Zev, Ian Nalar. You know, there's going to be a lot of just really stupid good legendary creatures, you know, like a Heart of Kieran, even though it's a vehicle, it's still legendary when it gets animated, right? This card will for sure see a lot of play. There's just not a whole grip ton, a whole lot of blah, 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 blah. There's not a lot of legendary creatures that people are going to be playing with. I mean, you're like, well, it doesn't hit Tajik. It's not very good. It doesn't hit Tajik. That's one creature out of like, go put your nose in a corner, right? It's stupid good. Cast down, we'll see gameplay for sure. Premium removal, by the way. Mwah. All right, moment of craving. There's a lot of... Two toughness creatures. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, okay? There's a, whatchamacallit? There's um the Knight of Autumn. It says, when it goes into the battlefield, choose one. That's a trigger that gets put on the stack, if I remember correctly. You can moment a craving it, and then they can get their triggers. It's kind of like, um, uh, this used to be stupid good up against the... Uh, Oh, the standard before, like, Dominarian M19 came out. People would play, like, Jade Light Ranger. You just moment of craving it before it got the counters. Stupid good card. It will for sure see play. Like I said, there's a lot of two toughness creatures out there. And to kill one and go up some life, very powerful, okay? Walk the Plank. This is an additional powerful removal spell. Merfolk, for some reason, <coughs> it's not a meta deck. It's a powerful deck, don't get me wrong, it's very powerful, but I feel like the reason why Merfolk is not a deck is because it really depends on, like, two or three or four creatures. Uh, uh, you know, if you don't draw them, you're just kind of flopping in the wind, right? 
Aside from that, I've played Merfolk in Standard. I've gone 5-0 with it. It's very powerful. Walk the Plank, though, will probably see some play, but not a lot. It's a very premium removal, though, because like I said, hardly anybody's playing Merfolks, and it kills anything for the most part. It's pretty powerful. Isareth the Awakener! Ooh, this card's stupid spicy. It's so good. With cards like Stitcher Supplier milling over cards and Golgari incidentally throwing cards in their graveyard, this is a reanimating effect on a stick, and it's got Death Touch. So, you know, that, uh, what is that? That one black creature, something Lotlith, a uh, zombie or whatever it's called, right? It's like a, six, a five or a six drop. When it comes into play, it deals one damage for each creature in your graveyard to everybody or whatever, right? Reanimated. It's stupid good, right? I, I can see Isareth the Awakener seeing some play. Maybe not tons, but she's powerful. Like, nonetheless, she's very powerful. And gr there was a... What was the guy's name? I forget. But he put at least... I think it was one, maybe two of these in his deck. And he ended up going almost completely undefeated the entire tournament. Like, it was powerful, right? That was, that's all I'm saying to say. Is this card is powerful. End of discussion, okay? Demon of Catastrophes. Stupid good. Very, very minuscule downside. Like... You could have a Stitcher Supplier out. Like, I keep going back to Stitcher Supplier, right? But if you're doing graveyard stuff, you can sack Stitcher Supplier, mill over three more cards, and now you've got a 6 6 Flying Trampler on four. Stupid powerful. Very, very good card. And I'm surprised it hasn't seen play in the current standard, um, mainly because I feel like the standard right now is so riddled with spot removal. It's uh, people overplay the spot remove. They overplay it. Like in Arena especially. I made a comment a while ago about players playing way too many counter spells. Like over overplaying counter spells. I'm talking like four negates, four essence scatters, four disallows, all on the main board. And it's just like, what are you even doing, buddy? This is why you're not winning. Right? Anyways. Uh, Ravenous Chupacabra. Stupid good card. Removal on a stick. It's almost always a two for one. Uh, it's just really good. That's all I'm going to say about that. This used to be a very premium card before everybody started moving to like more mid-rangey or rushdown decks or control decks. Uh, Ravenous Chupacabra will most likely see play because like I said, two black, two colorless, destroy a creature, and it's a body. Very powerful, especially when post-rotation happens. It's very powerful. Phyrexian Scriptures. Uh, you know, look. There's a lot of cards right now that do a lot of really good things, but nothing's doing what scriptures is doing. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature. You, it's a May ability. You don't have to, okay? And it can say your opponent or you, okay? It doesn't specify. Destroy all non-artifact creatures. Very powerful. And then exile all cards in your opponent opponent's graveyard not yours that's the key text this card will probably see some play in the sideboard because it's so powerful right um people typically want to be playing in their graveyards right now because of all the powerful cards that are out there Phyrexian scriptures is basically a clear out on one side it's very powerful that's what i'm going to say about that it's very i think it's going to see play veraska's contempt veraska's contempt premium removal I mean, exile a creature or a planeswalker, very relevant text, and then you go up to life. So there's not a whole lot of cards right now with hexproof on it. Like you got the the null hide Ferox, and then you've got like what? Harnish Tyrant, and then you've got Vine Mare. Like those are the only cards this doesn't hit right off the bat. But it hits everything else. Like, it hits everything else. It's stupid good. That's all I'm going to say about that. And it's going up in price for the most part. Like, when I first looked at this card for Paper Magic, it was like 10 bucks a piece. Now, the, the, the closer the rotation kept happening, people kept buying this card out because there's just not a card better than it. There's just really not. For premium, premium removal, this is where you're going to be. Very powerful. And it helps you kind of not die incidentally to like boros aggro or other cards like that um you know this is a premium card in esper control decks premium card in demir decks it's just a very good go it's just a very good card point blank and last but not least the eldest reborn this i cannot tell you uh right now it is stupid right now this is stupid good it is so unbelievably degenerate right now and just in the current meta the fact that it's going to be around for post-rotation, makes it a, 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 even more degenerate. That's all I'm going to say about that, right? Each opponent sacrifices a creature. So five, you kill one creature, right? Or a Planeswalker. On your next turn, discard a card. So it's already getting a two for one. And then on the third saga, put a creature or Planeswalker from a graveyard. It does not have to be yours. It can be your opponent's. 
very good all around i think this card's gonna see an uptick in gameplay i know that there's an abzan list going around right now that 5 is pretty frequently actually on uh, mtg go standard leagues that play almost a play set of this like it's stupid powerful it really is and moving forward you know that abzan list is probably going to turn into like a golgari list because you know it plays the abzan part for like the ixalan's bindings the silhouettes but now the assassin's trophy is coming out i don't think you really need to play the white portion you can play assassin's trophies and this and still do very very good at least that's my personal opinion the eldest reborn i think is probably one of the best mono black cards in all of standard right now as it is and moving forward it's going to be probably in the top i want to say five you know for mono black i think it might be even top three depending on your out depending on your outlook on things right that's all i'm gonna say about that uh so look let's cover these sideboard cards duress very powerful obviously we'll see play for playing black at least a two three or a four of in the sideboard fungal infection Stupid good prim premium removal, one mana. Even if it's a, t even if it's like a, a Tajik, Tajik has haste, right? If I'm if I'm not mistaken, doesn't have first strike though. You can fungal infection it, make it a two one. You get a token, then you can block Tajik. This is stupid good card. I think it's gonna see play. I really do. Um, I think it's gonna not see as much play as it should, but I believe that it's really really good. I really do. And kite cell freebooter is the last card. Uh, this is a hit or miss card, depending on how the format flip flops. This sees a lot of play right now in uh, creature control type base decks, right? So you've got like Hostage Taker, Kite Cell Freebooter, Chupacabra, uh, you know, just cards like that that hate the board and hate the hand. And this card is going to either see sideboard or mainboard play and a lot of players lists, probably a one or a two of, uh, maybe even a three of in the sideboard. But anyways, hopefully the video wasn't boring or anything like that. If you agree with me, let me know in the comment section. If you disagree with me, um, let me know in the comment section. I don't know. But anyways, you know what I'm talking about though, right? Love peace and chicken grease. Be safe. Thanks for stopping by. To spend some of your quality time. And uh, yeah. Stay classy.